what is up boys and girls and welcome back to a new video it has been a long time it has been two weeks since i uploaded last and uh today i'm back with some new blender content and i told you guys that you're probably gonna like it it's gonna be this nice wavy animation as you can yes you've already seen the thumbnail and it's gonna be a lot of fun it's really simple and easy it's fast and also uh we got a new patreon i'll put their names on the screen right now and um yeah, if you want to support me, get all my project files and get content earlier, which I'm not planning on doing, um, feel free to do so. You can support me on Patreon. And um, yeah, that's all I want to say. And let's get into the video. Alrighty, so here are our Blender. And let's start by getting rid of the default cube and getting ourselves a plane. This plane, I'm going to scale up. Five times, so scale five, and I want to get rid of the light all as well. And on this plane, I'm gonna click it, tab to go into edit mode, right click, and subdivide it a couple of times, so I get this grid. Maybe once more. Yeah. So this is cool. Um, so I'm gonna tab out again, go to my um modifiers, and add a displace modifier. After that, I want to click on new on show texture and texture tab and switch image or movie to clouds. This will give us that look something like this. Um, but this is still too spiky in my opinion. We could go and subdivide this one more time, but this would give us, um, this the grid would just be too dense when we apply the wireframe modifier. So don't subdivide it too much. So next I would just wanna turn on the size, turn up the size actually of my um cloud so what i did is just put the size to two which is the maximum i don't know if you can go higher you can go higher but two is the maximum you can drag it to so two on the size and then back at the mo in the modifiers i want to add a wireframe and this thing i want to turn down the thickness i want to turn down the thickness to something like this this looks good so now that we have our um wireframe done here what we want to do is we want to get ourselves a plane axis, an empty. And a guy called Sotomote, Sotomote? I'm not sure. I'll leave a link to his uh, Instagram in the description below. He's definitely called Soto. Uh, he came up with this idea on how to loop the noise seamlessly. It's it's really simple and it's it's so it's so big brain. I don't know. I I, I, would, never, I would have never thought of this. Um, so what you want to do is on the displace, after you get yourself an empty, on the displace, you want to turn the coordinates to object. And then under this object tab that is new here, you want to put the empty in this tab. And you'll see the, the noise will change. But we can put this back to the same noise we had in the beginning by just making our empty the same size as our... Um, as our plane so the plane uh the scale on the plane is five right now so let's make this five as well and you'll see what well, we're back to our normal noise so now that we're back to the noise we had before uh what we want to do now is you want to animate this empty so you might have noticed when you rotate this empty now it animates the noise which is really cool um so all we have to do now is just animate this empty. So it's pretty easy. What we do is we click on our empty and hover above the rotation over here. It doesn't matter if it's X, Y, or Z. You just hover above any of them and press I. After you've pressed I, this will turn uh, this yellow color and you'll see that a keyframe has popped up down here. Um, so now we want to go to the end of our timeline um, and put our X and Y rotation to 360 and now these will turn orange and we want to press i on them again so they all turn yellow again so now you see we have a keyframe here as well and now if we go back to the beginning we play you'll see it will animate the noise which is really 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 cool so now that we have the keyframes um set right here i want to go over some some things about the timeline and how it works so this down here is our timeline and we got to 
uh, change around some settings to get this thing working properly. So as you can see, I've already changed my end to 300, which is equal to 60 FPS for five seconds. How I calculated this is really simple. Um, you basically put in the, 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 the amount of FPS you want to have times the duration of your scene. So if, for example, if I want 30 FPS for eight seconds, I put 30 times eight, which is equal to 240 frames. So 240 frames would be 30, 30 FPS footage for eight seconds. But I want 60 FPS footage for five seconds. So 60 FPS times five. Um, and when you're calculating this, be sure to go to your, um, this one right here, your, to your output properties and change your frame rate to the frame rate you're calculating your frames with. So frame rate is 60. So now, uh, 300 frames are equal to 60 FPS for five seconds. So as you can see, if I play this now, it's going to be faster, but you can see this is five seconds now. And with that out of the way, we can worry about our keyframes again, because you might have noticed that when we play, it starts accelerating. And when it comes to the end back here, it stops and starts again, which is not what we want. What we want is we want to play have it play continuously without it stopping. So it's really easy to do. So what we do is we select both of our keyframes and press T and set our key keyframe interpolation to linear. Now if we go back to the beginning, you see that acceleration is gone. And if we come to this end, you see it is a seamless animation. <clears throat> so now that we have the seamless animation, um, we can start tweaking some things and worry about materials. So with this playing now, I see that this is kind of the waves are, for my taste, they're a little bit too much. So what I can do to fix that is go to the beginning here and I will scale up my empty a bit more. And as you can see, those waves will be flattened out and they'll, they'll become sharper when I scale down my empty. You will also see that will um, play the animation faster and slower depending on how big it is. So if I make this really big, you'll see that I'll have a smooth, slower animation with less waves. So but I want something like this with still a little bit of waves. Yeah, so right here, I think that this, um, the displacement of my waves is a little bit too much so what i can do here is just come to my plane go to the modifiers and turn down the strength of my displacement and that will fix that so you can change a lot of properties about your render highly customizable um now that we're here we're we're basically finished with with this so Stop the, stop the animation here and I'll worry about my camera placement. So if you start this scene, um, do not delete your camera because we're going to need the default position of our camera. What we want to do is um, we want to come over to our camera, go down to the camera, uh, the data pro object data properties down here, and put our lens type from perspective to orthographic. And now we want to hop back in here and you see that we now have this, this orthographic view mode, view mode. <laughs> I can't speak today, <laughs> view mode. So orthographic and it's not fitting into my, into the scene here, into the camera. What I can do to fix this is either turn up the orthographic scale, which is when your scene is too big, it's going to give you some clipping problems as you can see down here. So I don't want to do that. I want to leave this uh, as it is by default. What I just want to do is take my empty and my plane and scale them down. There we go. So now that we have them scaled down, they are 
they fit inside of the boundaries of my camera. Now I can hop over to my rendered view. And we're still in Eevee, so <laughs> let's change the Octane. And here we have it. So I'm going to start by going to my world properties and getting rid of this daylight. So remove, so it turns dark. After this, I'm going to drag open a new window. Shader editor. Press N to get rid of that. Go to my plane. Click new. And get rid of this glossy and put a diffuse material. A black body emission. And a RGB spectrum. Now we connect the RGB spectrum with our texture, texture emission with our emission, and the diffuse with the surface. And now we have this nice glowing plane. Um, this thing is way too bright, as you can see. So what we want to do is we want to turn on surface brightness to make it even brighter, and then turn down our power to like one. One is pretty good. I always use one. Um, and now I want to change my color here to something that I like. Um, maybe something blueish. This. And I also want to turn on double sided on my black body mission. I forgot that. So you can you can see the the the, the edge here. It's just not it's just not it's just not there. It's gone. So double sided. We'll fix that. <laughs> And uh, yeah, that's basically it. What we now just have to do is apply some bloom in our camera and we will also have to turn on camera imager and I'll put my response type to our sRGB. And all the way down here, we have post-processing. I'll turn that on, put my bloom power to 25, like I always do. Maybe a bit, a bit higher even, something like this. Just to preview it better here, I'll show overlays. I'll turn that off. And here we go. This is looking pretty nice. So now to our animation, which um, a lot of people have problems with animating in Blender because there's this one step that messes up the render. Um, so what we have to do to render properly is we want to come to the output properties, um, put our frame rate to the frame rate we calculated the frames with, and we want to select a folder we want to render our our images into so um our output is sent to tmp right now which is when we go into our file explorer which is on our c drive right here which is this um this folder right here temp um it's going to render into there but we don't want that we want to render to somewhere on our desktop. So I'm just gonna go to my desktop here. Desktop. And then I just quickly wanna make a new folder. I'll call this folder animation. Hit enter. Be sure to go inside of this folder and type in a name. Um I just wanted to call this anim for animation. And then I'll hit accept and you will see it will I'll put it to my desktop as animation into the folder animation. So um, under the file format, you want to choose PNG, just go with PNG. Um, you can go f for JPEG if you want some, um, if you want the, f the, the files to not be that big. But I don't know if the JPEG has the same um, quality as PNG. So just go with PNG if you have space on your desktop or wherever you want to save it. Color, um, RGBA, I actually don't know what the difference is between all these. I just always go with the default RGB uh, A. And the color depth is, I think it's just eight or 16 bit. So I just go with eight bit. Compression, just leave it as it is. Image sequence, leave these two as it is as well. And that is it for our render properties, output properties. So on our render properties now, we want to collapse our octane kernel and under this Octane Server tab, we're going to come to Octane Settings and render all meshes as is. We want to change it from as is to reshapeable. That will actually make your mesh update inside of the render because 
I had a lot of people actually comment and um, not comment, but <clears throat> hit me up in my DMs on Instagram that their animation is just rendering out the same frame over and over again. This will fix it. This will make you actually be able to animate in cinema, in, not in cinema 4D, but in Blender Octane. So that's cool. Now we have that. And under my Octane kernel here, under the maximum samples, I'm just going to go with 50. Um, the animation in the beginning of this video you guys saw was um, was rendered with 25 samples. So 50 samples is also, like 50 samples is enough. Um, so go type path trace. There it is. Um, so what we want to do now is we just want to come up to render and render animation. And there we go, boom. And we'll start outputting our frames, start rendering them. So if we close out of this now, and I hit up my, my desktop animation, and you'll see it will start outputting these frames. So now that it's outputting these frames and we know it's working, um, I'm just going to quickly switch over to um, my, own, my own folder here. Where's it, where's it gone? There it is. Um, this is the animation you you guys saw in the beginning. Um, this is how it's going to look in the end. It's just going to be all those 300 frames. And these, you basically, let me open these. Um, you switch through them. You see, you basically have to line all these up in some kind of editing program like After Effects or Premiere Pro. It They all work. Um, and yeah, I hope you guys liked it. Um, it. It's a really messy video. I'm sorry with all the cuts and stuff. It's really messy. I'll, I, I, a lot of things happened while I was recording. So that's why I had to cut so many things out. Like stuff went wrong or something, something else. So yeah, uh, excuse me for that. And yeah, that's it. I uh, hope you guys liked it. And I will see you all, see you all in the next one. Stay creative.